If you master personal finance, then you are setting yourself up for financial success. But so many people fail to get it right. And some only do a bit right. So this week, we're going to get you organised. We're going to run through a series of steps to make sure that you and your finances are in good shape. Now, you may have heard some of these before, but some of them are probably going to be new to you because we're not taught this stuff. Personal finance, not on the agenda at school. We don't get taught about budgeting and all these disciplines and measures that actually are quite basic, but never passed on to us. And the first thing you need to understand, the amount you save or the ability you have to save is after your income, minus your spending, what is left is your potential savings. Now, what a lot of people do is have income and spend until there's nothing left. So they go, right, this is my spending account. But actually, once you've spent what you need, then if you have the discipline, you can put the rest away in savings. But what happens if you're in the habit of spending all your money every month? Or that even if you are a bit disciplined, your income minus expenses still nets off to zero or worse. There are some simple quick wins that you can do straight away to move things back in your favor. The first thing is go through your last month's bank statement and just check everything in there. You'd be surprised how a little direct debit can sneak in there of a service that you no longer use. There could be a number of things that you're spotting and it could help you spot trends that can help you change your behavior as well. But once you look at that bank statement and you see, wow, I am spending a couple of hundred pounds a month on coffee, that can give you the wake up call to change your habits, maybe change your coffee shop or maybe make your own. But what it will do is it'll give you that awareness which is really powerful. So you cut out the things that you wouldn't miss. The next thing to do is renegotiate or switch your major bills. So look at your energy bills. Often by switching, you can save yourself money. Sky or Virgin or whatever TV supplier you use, you can nearly always get a better deal. If your original deal period has run out, then you are almost certainly gonna be overpaying. Do that now. There are services to help you do things like this. There is the Money Saving Experts Energy Club. They will help you find the best deals by alerting you when a better deal is on offer. It's a no brainer. And another tip, make sure you do this every year. Just put it in your calendar as a recurring event, just to remember to go and check your sky bills, your utility bills, and whatever else you have on, and any other service providers you have. And just make sure you're getting the best deals. Having done that, the question then becomes, Do you need to have a budget to keep on top of your spending and make sure it doesn't get out of hand? The conventional advice is always, step one, make a budget. That's given to you as the first thing you should do. I don't think it's as clear cut as that. A budget can be really helpful. If you struggle with your spending, and you'll have got an insight from that from going through the exercise that Rob just talked about, if you respond well to giving yourself strict rules to follow, then having a budget can be extremely powerful. So you can just allocate pots of money for different things, making sure that there's enough left over for the saving you want to do at the end, and everything takes care of itself. So I wouldn't say you necessarily need to have a budget, it depends on you, but it is important to be conscious of how much you're spending. It's so easy, especially now with contactless, to just spend money without even really realising you're spending it. So that's an alternative, but maybe a budget is for you, or maybe you don't need either of those things, and just doing that annual audit is going to be enough. It depends on your personality, it depends on your situation, it depends on how ambitious you are, but one thing's for sure, you definitely need to be doing something. So we've given you the easy wins, but you can make more painful cuts if the goal is important enough to you. If you need to save a pot to get started in investment, well, that's pretty motivating. And you may then consider to go this next step. And that's looking at your biggest costs, things like accommodation, your food bills, childcare, transport. You can't change them overnight or over a phone call, but by changing your habits or making some decisions, you can make some big changes to how much you save every single month. So first of all, if you own your own home, check your mortgage rate. Are you on the best product? Have you drifted onto a standard variable? If you have, then you're probably no longer on the best product. So put it in your calendar to review your mortgage rate and make sure you're getting the very best deal. Now, if that sounds a bit intimidating to you, then work with a mortgage broker. They should be able to quickly tell you without charging you whether they think they can save you money or not. Then if they charge a fee, it should be more than covered with the savings that you can make. If you don't own and you rent, if you see a new build development come up in any town or city and there's a lot of rental properties on there, you can go in and just put low offers into multiple properties and see if one accepts. They might not, but it's worth a go. Taking it further, you could move into a smaller, cheaper home without moving too far away from where you currently live and save hundreds and hundreds of pounds every single month. It will mean that you have to make some sacrifices, but they don't have to be huge. Do you need a car? Ditching a car could make a big difference. 
Or, if you live outside of a city, do you need all the cars you have? Don't just dismiss it, think about it. Because if you can do that, again, you're going to be saving loads of money. So you don't have to do all of those suggestions that I've just ran through. But if you do one or two of them, the state of your finances in the not too distant future are going to be looking a lot more rosy. Again, like I said earlier, this is about being conscious with your spending. It's about having the best life you can as inexpensively as you can. So that's enough saving now. We're not going to ask you to cut back any further. We're going to move on to the next step, which is paying yourself first. This is an idea that comes from the book Rich Dad Poor Dad and indeed a video about the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, which we'll link to in the show notes. The concept here is that now you should know how much you're able to save. It should be at least something and it should be more than you were saving before. Now you need to automate that. Don't rely on it just being left over. Instead, at a set time, so if you get paid on the same day each month, then just after that date, set up a standing order to whisk however much you want to save out of your normal everyday account and into a dedicated savings account. The great thing about that is then it just happens. Check back in a few months and that savings pot has built up. The other nice thing about this is what it's saying psychologically. You're saying, saving comes first. My future investments come first. So it's a very simple concept, but for me, it's a very powerful one. So what do you do when you start to pay yourself first and you start to build this savings pot? Well, you need to build an emergency fund first and foremost, because if you don't, you could get yourself into trouble. So save up at least three months worth of personal expenses. Now, the amount you save will depend on your personal circumstances. And other factors will come into play as well. Your general tolerance to risk, whether it's just for you or if you have other people dependent on you like a family. So you've gone through, you've optimised your spending, you've automated your saving, you've built up your emergency fund. Surely time to invest now. Well, maybe, but there could be one more step. It's time to take a look at your debts. There's a really simple rule to know whether you should be paying off the debt before you start investing or not. And it's this, if the interest rate that you're paying on your debt is higher than the return you'd expect to make by investing that money, then you should pay off the debt. In other words, if your interest payments on your existing debt are £100 a month and your investment could bring in 70, then obviously you'd be better off not making that investment and just getting rid of the debt first. So if you've got credit card debt, that normally is a contender to pay off straight away because the interest rate could be high. On the other hand, a lot of people have got old style student loans where the interest rate is really very low. You might choose to pay that kind of loan off. So now you really are ready to invest. So when you get going, don't stretch yourself too thin. Remember, you'll need to cover the costs until your investment is up and running. And then once it's up and running, you may have a bit of a void period to begin with. And then when that income does start to build up and turns into savings, be patient. Let that pot accumulate, first for security reasons and then for investment reasons. Because before you know it, that pot will be sizable and then you can reinvest and increase your income even further. So we've talked a lot about saving. And that is really important. Saving is the cornerstone of personal finance. But it's really important to recognise that controlling your spending is only half of the equation. As we said back at the start, the amount that you save is the amount you earn minus the amount you spend. So cutting the amount you spend is great, but it has a flaw to it. There's only so much you can cut away. So once you've had those easy wins, you've optimised as much as you can, then it's time to flip it and start looking at the other part, which is your income. And this is much harder to give advice about because it's different for every person, but it's well worth spending some time thinking about. So a quick win for most people, is just going through your house and going, what do we not use anymore? And list it on eBay or Facebook and bring in that revenue. There's nothing in here that's going to take effort for you to understand. Once you hear it, it should all be pretty intuitive. And really, that's all you need. There is nothing complicated about this. You just have to do it. Everyone's only got a certain amount of time and, and if we're honest, a certain amount of energy that we can give to this rather than other parts of our lives. So make sure that you're investing that time wisely. But do get into the habit of those regular reviews. It only has to be every six to 12 months and that will make sure that you're staying on the right track. And it's incredible the big difference that these tiny little actions can compound into. So there you have it. You know a bit more now. If you really want to know more, make sure you subscribe. Or if you really, really want to know more, make sure you check out the Property Podcast, the UK's most popular property podcast. Subscribe through Apple, iTunes, Spotify, or however you consume your podcasts.